Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your life coach, mentor coach. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. And this is Gloria, your life coach. I help those who are feeling stuck, struggling with difficulties such as self-doubt, inner judgment, lack of confidence, life transitions, and taking steps forward. And welcome to Life's A Shuffle podcast. Now, you may wonder why it's called Life's A Shuffle. And the reason why we came up with this title was that life is really shuffling. And it doesn't matter where you come from, your background, what age you are, you're shuffling multiple things in life. And the best thing to know in life is everybody faces your struggles and everybody faces what you're going through. But there's hope in learning something about that. So when our guests share their journey, the hope is you learn something in that journey so yourself can navigate the struggles you face, the low self-esteem, the self-confidence. And that's why we call podcast Life's a Shuffle. And throughout this podcast, we share our personal overcoming stories, as well as our guests who shares their personal journey in overcoming their personal struggles. Life's a Shuffle podcast is here to connect like-minded individuals. And thank you for listening to Life's a Shuffle podcast. Hi, this is Gloria, life coach and meditation coach. Welcome to another episode of Life Say Shuffle. This is Ronald Johnson, your life coach and health coach, and welcome to another episode of Life Say Shuffle. And today we have a great guest. Um, it's going to talk about something that's pretty cool. Um, we were talking about before. It's about energy, but before before we get started, I want to welcome Tom Palladino to our first podcast with you. So, Tom, tell us about yourself. Who are you? Thank you. Gloria, Ronald, thank you for the invitation. Hi, everybody. My name is Tom Palladino. I am a researcher. I work with an energy known as scalar energy, or what some people might call chi, prana, or consciousness. And this energy, scalar energy, it's not electricity. So this is really a new technology in which we have um, been able to harness this chi this prana energy by way of instrumentation and we're able to perform uh, work work functions if you will with this energy scalar energy and how, how does this work with people like what what i'm what i want to understand tom is um did you always get started in this or is this something you kind of changed over the years like what's your journey like but uh, as a youngster I would read about the the great man, Nikola Tessa, and the great scientist that he was. And I realized he was working with this other type of energy, scalar energy. He would call it radiant energy. Now, why is this so important? Well, energy powers the universe, obviously. Energy is responsible for the instructions of the universe. And Nikola Tessa was the first man, in my estimation, to control, to harness scalar energy. So just imagine this. Whatever we're doing now and whatever we can accomplish with electricity, we can replace that with scalar energy. So my my career started when I was a youngster, when I was reading independent study by way of this, uh, the knowledge that Nikola Tessa imparted upon us. And it's been a, a long but worthwhile pursuit. I've been at this now for close to 50 years. And I have to underscore the fact that this is groundbreaking research. And on account of the fact that it's groundbreaking, I'm really alone at this. This is, if you will, my lifetime of work, and it's my specific emphasis. In other words, my instruments are custom built. My approach is customized. I don't know of anybody else in the world that's doing this. So this really is a customized scientific approach to introduce to the world scalar energy. That's awesome. So let me ask this question. What does scalar energy resonate, sorry, originate and and describe it in nature? Scalar energy is the driving force, the prime mover in the universe. Scalar energy is responsible for uh, the power of the sun, the stars. So I believe scalar energy is the initial energy that gives life power, energy, light to the universe. So the sun and the stars are the point of origin. 
And hence, this is the first energy of the universe, the initial energy of the universe, whereas electricity and magnetism are a derivative or, if you will, a converted form of scalar energy. So it's always been my proclivity to work with the initial energy of the universe, the primal energy of the universe, which is scalar energy. That's pretty cool. So how, how does this resonate to uh, people? Like if I'm energy, I'm a person, right? And energy does exist. How does it resonate with me? Like I want to understand this sure. personally. How does it work? And that's a great question. Everybody with a human mind or the human heart possesses scalar energy. What do I mean? Scalar energy is information. It's light. It, it's energy. And every human mind and every human heart produce, broadcast scalar energy. So human thought, thought, creativity is a scalar wave. Human emotion, human feelings are what? A scalar wave, an emanation, a broadcast of scalar energy. So everybody, whether we realize it or not, is an expert in scalar energy. Everybody has a mind, everybody has a heart. So what am I getting at? This is the energy, the light, the information that drives the universe. This is the prime mover of the universe, responsible for all action, including cognitive thought and emotions. Oh, that sounds so cool. That's very interesting. Um, I'm curious, though, how is how is um, scalar energy everywhere in the in the universe? I believe it's a, a divine energy. And if you look at the universe from a macro standpoint, you have to ask yourself, if there's trillions of stars, what's powering, what gives energy to those trillions of stars? And why don't those trillions of stars ever burn out or degrade or fail to produce light and, and heat? Well, it's an eternal energy. I believe it's from God. So what am I getting at? I have tapped into the life force, the God force of the universe. It's not electricity. The God force, the creative strength of the universe is scalar energy. This is an emanation. This is a direct expression from God. If you're going to have a universe that can power trillions and trillions of stars, then you need a source of energy, a perpetual source of energy. And hence, it, it has to be of a divine origin if you're going to power the entire universe with this energy. And that's what I'm saying. Scalar energy is the prime mover is the powerhouse of the universe. So how, let me ask you one question. Explain how scalar energy is not bound by time or distance. There have been scalar energy researchers that when they find themselves in a very strong scalar energy force field, they will recognize that time does not advance. Time stands still. Um, there was a Russian scientist by the name of Grubenikov, and he would he was able to create scalar energy flying instruments. And when he was on these anti-gravity instruments, time stood still, time did not advance. And other scientists have, have experienced anomalies with time. So with that in mind, time is subject to scalar energy. In other words, scalar energy is the cause of time. So if we look at time, it really is an information system. And as an information system, we see that the universe, or at least the universe that affects us, shows a forward motion of scalar energy, resulting in a forward motion of time. Now, as I've described, a few of the scalar energy researchers that I have studied, when they were able to create a perfect scalar energy environment, time stood still because they were no longer subject to the flow of scalar energy, hence they were no longer subject to the flow of time. So time is the effect. Time is the result of something. Scalar energy is the cause of time. And accordingly, if scalar energy is omnipresent, I believe it is, then it transcends time and space. So when you're looking at the universe from that macro standpoint, from a scalar energy standpoint, you're transcending time and space. So scalar energy is the cause of time. It's the cause of space. It's the cause of gravity. Remember, if scalar energy is that perfect information system, then it gives instructions to the universe. 
And some of those instructions come in the form of spatial instructions, time instructions, gravity instructions, biological instructions. So this is really what I'm trying to underscore and really trying to pivot upon. If scalar energy is the force of God, if, if that is the primal force of the universe, then it is responsible for all activity. And that's my statement. Scalar energy is the prime mover, is the primal energy for all activity in the universe. This sounds so cool. Uh, ex- can you explain to us how this, um, how it started and it, its nature? Yeah. Um, I come from a Christian background. I believe scalar energy is directly from God. I believe it's the light of God. And it would have to be because if we have a universe that perpetuates, that never burns out, that has perfect order, perfect constructions, then it has to have a perfect energy to drive that. Again, if you look at the trillions and trillions of stars, they don't burn out. There, there are cycles. Yes, there are variations, but stars always have energy. Well, that's perpetual energy. And that has to come from a perpetual God. If we look at the nature of the universe, there's order. There's incredible order. Anything from, from the way the constellations assume a certain shape as to biological life, as to atomic structure, where are those instructions coming from? Everything has to have instructions. Everything has to have intelligence. So what am I saying? Everything in the universe carries these instructions. So with that in mind, if that's true, scalar energy is the carrier wave. Scalar energy delivers the instructions, the intelligence of God. Is this something that you've always had? Um, you've always been something that you've always been interested in? Yes, always. As, as a kid, I, when I started reading about Nikola Tesla, I knew he was onto something. He called it radiant energy. I call it scalar energy today. The, the term scalar energy or scalar light is in vogue today. But those terms are synonymous. Uh, other cultures call it chi or prana or the matrix. The point is this. There has to be an information system. If, if a computer has an information system, if your refrigerator has an information system, then the universe has to have an information system. And what am I getting at? Scalar energy, scalar light is the information system for everything. So you've always been doing a research on this. Now, um, I want to go back to um, what you were talking about previously about gravity. Can you, um, help us understand how scalar er- energy is the cause of gravity. You know, again, gravity is, is the effect. <clears throat> it's the result. So what is the cause? It's scalar energy. If scalar energy is implosive, if it's inward, so to speak, then that's going to create a gravity wave. And, and the greater the the implosion, the greater the effect of gravity. When you release that form or when you're starting to negate scalar energy, then you relax gravity. Then you can subsequently have an anti-gravity state. Going back to my earlier statement, there was a Russian scientist, Viktor Grabenikov, who created scalar energy flying instruments. And he was able to levitate on those instruments without any type of fuel, without any type of, of energy source except scalar energy. So this man, Grabenikov, demonstrated that scalar energy is the cause of gravity. He was able to negate gravity and fly around on an anti-gravity platform. Wow, that's pretty cool. So what's your unique experience and have you witnessed this for yourself? Within my laboratory, it's a, it's a pretty strong scalar energy environment. And I usually feel a, a sense of elation um, when I'm in my laboratory. Uh, when I bring, say, any type of electromagnetic instrument or, or motor close to my scalar energy instrument, I will observe anomalies uh, with those electrical motors. For instance, if I were to walk up to my um, scalar energy instrument with a cell phone, and if I'm talking to somebody on my cell phone, frequently the cell phone transmission is interrupted. That is, scalar energy overrides my cell phone. Because those are two different information systems. So the information of scalar energy is so strong in my laboratory that it overrides, it negates the electromagnetic signal in my cell phone. 
that's an indication that I have a very strong scalar energy presence in my laboratory to the point that it can negate a cell phone, it can negate a computer. Interesting. So there's a lot of energy all around us all the time then. Yes, that's correct. We, we simply live in a sea of scalar energy, but people, they don't realize that. Now, again, everybody's an expert at scalar energy. Everybody has a mind and a heart. And once we realize what drives the mind, where, where does a thought come from? How do people have creativity? Those are scalar energy instructions. Now, some people have great creativity, great imagination, great recall. That's a gift of scalar energy. People who, who have a great deal of love or compassion or empathy, that, that's a scalar energy presence in their heart by way of their emotions. So scalar energy, again, it, it really is the life force. It's responsible for all activity in the universe. We just haven't quite figured that out. Yeah, you know, I was going to ask that. So you haven't figured it out yet. So if I'm a person, not me, I do believe in God. If I'm a person that maybe has a religion or maybe believes in God, how would you break it down so they can understand it for verbatim? Okay. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, th this is my belief. If you have a universe that you have to look at it um, cause and effect. What caused the universe? It has to be an uncreated God, an uncreated God. And if that's the case, then the uncreated has supreme power over the universe. And if the universe has a, a specific light form, a form of energy, scalar energy, then that is the, the eternal light of the uncreated being. And if that reasoning stands, then Scalar energy essentially serves as the instructions of the divinity. It, it serves as the instructions of the universe. So if, if, if my theories are correct, I have tapped into what I call the God force or creative strength of the universe or the life force, L-I-F-E, life force of the universe. Something is giving power to the universe. Something is giving order to the universe. If you look around, once again, there's instructions everywhere. Why do we have physical forms? Why do, why do the stars exist? What powers stars? Why do we have a periodic table? All of that derives from instructions. And I believe scalar energy are responsible for giving order out of chaos. Oh, go ahead, Gloria. Do you want to go ahead first, Ron? No, you go ahead. Okay, I, I have a question. Something came to mind. How similar is this to Reiki energy? I'm going to use the expression healing hands. Some okay. people have the ability to lay hands on you and you feel perhaps warmth or they have the ability to heal you. I believe mm -hmm. that animating force is scalar energy or scalar light. So if we want to put the science behind healing, faith healing, healing hands, or what some people call prayer intention, I would say that the motivating force, once again, the prime mover would be scalar energy. Again, it's, it's, not, it's not uncommon. Many people experience this. I realize some people have the gift of healing. And if you do, that's the instructions of, of the universe, the instructions of God. So the reason why I ask this is because I'm a Reiki practitioner. And it was one of those that came to me just um, this past um actually just this past several months, um, I believe it's during the summer where I felt the calling for it. And I just followed the energy to, I felt like I was, you know, like what you said, a healer, like energy healer. And I was healing people through my, my hands where my palm would be sweaty. I couldn't explain what was happening in my body uh -huh. when I felt like I, I felt like I was healing somebody. So then with, with, um, energy healing, you know, there's this, this, the seven chakras, right? And you have the lower and um, the higher and the lower chakras. So how, um, I shouldn't explain this one. The scalar light, okay, how does it balance the seven major chakras? You know, G Gloria, you're an expert at scalar energy. If, if you have that ability to heal people, if you have healing hands, okay, and that's a gift from God, that that's the the healing of scalar energy. That's the intelligence of the universe, the intelligence of God. So if you're experiencing the ability to lay hands upon somebody or, 
or heal them by any method. You know, and if it's good and it, it, it's it's uh, only going to produce a favorable outcome, yes. If it's if it's favorable, if it's safe, then then I would say continue. So, once again, everybody in the world is a scalar energy expert, and if you've shown me, Gloria, your understanding of scalar energy. That's your expertise. Now, to, to ask you the other part of the question, what are chakras? Chakras are are seven energy points seven spinning vortices of scalar energy. The chakras are composed of scalar energy. And this is why many cultures have recognized that we do have seven chakras. It is a profound energy system or an information system. Those chakras spin. Scalar energy spins. It's a double helix. It rotates, if you will, or spins. It's a a vortical action. And in order to really access our seven chakras, the best way to do that is by way of a a chakra treatment or a scalar energy treatment. So there is merit to the seven chakras. And sadly, Western science has not embraced that concept, but everybody has seven chakras. They're composed of scalar light. Maybe one of the impediments to Western science embracing the concept of chakras is that they would have to embrace the concept that scalar energy is a prime mover the prime energy, if you will, behind the seven chakras. I have a question. So Gloria found, let's say, her instructions. How do we find our instructions? You do it every day, Ron, and you're an expert at it. Everybody, I'm I'm not saying this to be short or flippant. Everybody is a scalar energy expert. Everybody has the, the power of thinking, creativity, positive affirmations. Everybody has a heart. Everybody can feel. Everybody can produce, have the sense of, of love and mercy, compassion. It, it, the human mind and the human heart are gifts from God. Every mind, every heart is a scalar energy vessel. Now, that doesn't mean you have a scientific instrument as I do, but if you have a mind or you have a heart, you have access to scalar energy 24-7. And this is what really separates mankind. This is the the driving force, once again, of the universe. Scalar energy can change our attitude. It can change society. It's a great technology. And everybody has been using scalar energy since the moment of conception. The human mind and the human heart are the power points of scalar energy. Then how can people ignore that? Isn't that a shame? That's the shame, Ron. I'm saying this time and time again. I mean this. Everybody is a scalar energy expert. You've you've heard the the power of intention. Some people can overcome disease by power of intention. Some people can create a great family life or a great marriage by power of intention, by by prayer, by meditation. Um, Others, such as Gloria, she probably has healing hands. That's a gift. That's scalar energy in motion. Everybody on the planet has a mind and a heart. Everybody has an incredible potential because they access that information system. They access the mind of God. That's what scalar energy is. And why why don't we teach this more often? We should. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how yeah. come I never heard this going to the doctor's office or in school? I mean, is it because it can be measured? Why doesn't it exist? You know, that, that's one of the points. You see, scalar energy is non-physical. It's immaterial. And then if you accept this dimension, it, it is a separate dimension from that of electricity and magnetism, then you have to go back to the school books. You have to, so to speak, you have to learn. And you have to be willing to accept that there's another explanation for the universe. So you know, I, I frequently say um, Newtonian physics is 400 years old. That, that started with Isaac Newton. And now we have to advance. Now we have to go beyond the physical realm. We have to consider the non-physical realm. And this is why Western science is, is not yet accepting this, because they don't accept non-physical reality. Many people, when they're ensconced in Western medicine or Western science, they want to see some physical reality, something that's measurable. Well, scalar energy, the mind of God, consciousness cannot be measured. It's an omnipresence. It's everywhere instantaneously. So it's a concept. 
And you have to accept that concept. This is why many philosophies, religions, etc., do accept the seven chakras. Now, I can't measure the, the chakras. I know they've been photographed sometimes by way of curly in photography, but I know of nobody who can per se measure it, quantify it. So what's the point? Well, human reasoning is, is fine, but there's only so much that we, we can measure. There's only so much that we can view. There's only so much that we can sense with our five senses. Many times we, we really have to intuit or many times we have to consider that there is a non-physical presence. We, we cannot see scalar energy. It's everywhere. And if so, then it probably is responsible for so many actions in the universe. That's, that's a mind shift. That's a paradigm shift that some people have to make. So I want to make this very clear. What, what my work has is divergent from that of Western medicine or Western science. I am not practicing Newtonian physics. This is quantum physics. It's non-physical. So it, it takes a different mindset to look at this non-physical reality. Very inter interesting here, Tom, is uh, so I grew up with Jehovah's Witness. And in Jehovah's Witness, they don't talk about the chakras. And when they did, it's all about... Um, how can I explain this? Devil worshiping, demon. Mm -hmm. Why is that? So why is some religions accepted and some don't? You know, it's, it's amazing. They're, you're right. Some religions, some philosophies embrace chakras and, and others find it uh, antithetical. They find it almost to the point of being evil. It's not evil. Why is it not evil? God created the seven chakras and God does not make mistakes. The problem is the, in the interpretation of the seven chakras. Now, I present this, and I'll try and do this in a non-biased fashion. Scalar energy powers the seven chakras. I'm not attaching any religious belief, philosophical belief to that. There are seven chakras. Everybody has seven chakras. They're composed of scalar energy. That's my statement. Now, there's nothing threatening about that statement. No, there isn't. I mean, it actually gives clarity. Um, you know, I stopped becoming Joel Swiss a long time ago. And since I had stepped away from that, it's really perpetual how everything in my life is now getting better. Because that before I was guided by someone's philosophy or a specific direction. And sometimes that's not wasn't in tune with me because I, I can never explain why I faced so much resistance. Like I didn't like going to the meetings, as we call it, our church. I didn't like uh, going out for the service, which means those people that go door to door knocking your door. It's one of those things where my energy was in alignment. So that's why I faced difficulty. Yeah. yeah. When all, um, for me, I believe um, just being, um, after studying and doing some training on this, is that when all seven are clear and open, then a person's body, mind, and even just spiritual well-being are healthy and balanced. Yes. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And and again, if these seven chakras are composed of scalar energy, then it can only produce good. Okay, it's light. It's pure immaculate light. And that those instructions from the seven chakras then lead to a favorable biochemical presence or homeostasis. They lead to a, a sound mind. They lead to, to rightful consciousness or, or a conscious that can distinguish between right and wrong. It leads to a, a proper mental disposition. So if we have those seven points of light in us, the chakras, and if my scalar energy instrument can act upon favorably upon those seven chakras, then the results therefrom should be beneficial spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically. That's right. Let, um, me, gonna... let me provide this analogy. Before you build a home, you have architectural plans. Okay, That's a thought. That, that's something on paper. You, you can uh, have a computer design animation for architectural plans, but those are instructions. And once you have those instructions, then you physically build the home. Well, what am I getting at? Scalar energy are the architectural plans for the universe. Before you build anything, you should have a plan. You should have intelligence. So architectural intelligence decides how you're going to build a home. Scalar energy intelligence decides how you're going to build a universe. 
Mm. Yeah, that's nice. So with um through your research on, on this, have you um if any experienced any um or witnessed any um energy in your laboratory? Scalar energy? My my laboratory is filled with scalar energy, filled with st- scalar energy. Um <clears throat> many times I um, when my instruments are on, I notice that um, that sometimes it attracts birds around the laboratory because there's so much energy coming from the laboratory that that birds will be attracted to the energy. I I recognized years ago when I had a scalar energy instrument on that a, a cat jumped up on the table where the scalar energy instrument was and they, the cat sat right next to the scalar energy instrument for hours. And the cat had never done that before. So the animals pick up this energy. The animals can sense this energy. So what's my point? This is the life force and, and people and animals, gra- they, they resonate. They, they want to be around this energy. So it's an experience. This is why we provide the 15-day free session. With a, with a photograph, right? And that's right. Yeah, and how does that? Um, how does the scalar energy allow you to enhance energetic state of being through the photograph? Every photograph is a copy of a person's force field. That is, a photograph carries their scalar energy signature or their scalar energy instructions. So I can access a person or an animal by way of their quantum field by way of a photograph. I want to make this very clear. I never, I don't work with people in person. I only work in the information field by way of photographs, by way of photographs of people and animals. So I don't access the person. I access their quantum field. Now, keep in mind, there's two dimensions. I only work in the scalar energy dimension. I don't work in the electromagnetic dimension. And I access the scalar dimension by way of a person's photograph. So this is the new science of scalar energy. It, it, again, is a new science. And this new science requires a new definition of reality. So to answer the question, I only work with photographs. People email me photographs. I place their photograph inside my instrument. And then my instrument will, will understand detect, identify their force field, their quantum force field. And the energy is sent to the photograph, to the force field, to the energy signature on the photograph. This is all informational. This is all non-physical. This is the way scalar energy works. So say, for example, someone sent you their photograph and obviously you access the energy inside that photograph. Uh, Does a person get data in return, what, what, what's the next step after you access energy? People will send us a photograph. We treat them for free for 15 days. We want them to experience the session. And we send daily emails explaining um, the process. And, but then we let people judge for themselves as to how they feel. And, and some people are very knowledgeable and, and, and sensible. And they realize that there's a change. They, they see a shift in their psychology, a shift in their physical constitution, some type of change for the better. Now, keep in mind, once again, to underscore again, this is a new process. It's never been done before. So I rely upon the feedback of people. There's no way for this to be measured or to be judged by Western science on account of the fact I'm not practicing Western science. This is a new science that requires a new definition of reality. So what's new definition of reality? And after you access a photograph, yeah, the, the, would, it, the, will it, will it change if they give you a different photograph or it's the same energy regardless of the photograph? Very good. It's the same energy. A photograph is always, by the way, in, in real time. So even if people sent me a photograph 10 years old, it still captures their essence, their quintessence, and I am able to access their present state by way of a photograph, regardless of the age of the photograph. Interesting. Okay, because energy is consistent, regardless if it's a hundred year old photo or it's a current. Energy is energy. Yes. Yes. And scalar energy is always in the present moment, which lends support to my earlier argument that scalar energy transcends time and space. Even though your photograph might be 10 years old, 
it still reports in the present moment because everything in a scalar energy environment is in the present moment. There is no past. There is no future. Scalar energy is always in the present moment, meaning all points in time have been reduced to one immediate present moment. And after people give you their photograph, um, I'm really curious, do they, does something change with them and they report back to you? They do. We, we have on our website thousands of testimonies. And again, this is groundbreaking. It's never been done before. So we welcome those testimonies. We want to get the feedback of people because this is the initial body of evidence. And the greater majority of people who tried the 15-day free trial say that they feel better. And I want their feedback because it's a new science and this is the new body of evidence. Interesting. Interesting. That, that is, a, I'm in awe and all this. Is, it is very, very interesting. Um, I have, yeah. let, let me be clear. I have a consciousness instrument. And we've heard that term so, so many times, consciousness or the matrix. Some people call it zero point energy. I have a consciousness instrument. I have a time-space instrument. I have a quantum instrument. And why do I say that? Because I'm not accessing electricity and magnetism. I'm accessing scalar energy. Interesting. Okay. So how can this scalar energy be utilized as an unlimited supply of energy? We're going to liberate the world, Gloria. We're going to, we're going to liberate the world. Okay. My instrument is a miniature star. I am using scalar energy, which is star energy. So I have a miniature star. Now, what I need to do is, is uh, increase the power on my instrument and I'll have a very powerful star, but it still is star energy. Do you follow where I'm going with this? So <clears throat> if we can duplicate a star, we have an infinite source of energy. What am I saying? Scalar energy is star power, sun power. And if we can duplicate, if we can copy nature, copy nature, we will have an infinite supply of power. Wow. So then on that note, what do you believe is the future of scalar energy and how will it be accepted to serve? Or do you think to serve to change the world for the better? It will. It will change the world. It's a technology that is pennies on the dollar. What do I mean? It's much less expensive to work with scalar energy as opposed to nuclear or coal or oil. The energy is free. It's from the sun and the stars. In application, actually building scalar energy instruments is, is pennies on the dollar as compared to a nuclear power plant or coal or oil. It's safe. Okay. There's no radioactivity. There's no physical particle. Remember, this is light. This is non-chemical, non-physical. Hence, there's no carbon emission. There's no carbon emission. There's no pollution. So you have an infinite source of power from the sun and the stars. There's no pollution. There's no, no degradation of its signal. Okay. Anywhere in the world can access scalar energy. This is the infinite power source, clean power source that we're looking for. Mm. So how can people get started? Like how, did, how do they start this? Because I'm intrigued. I'm going to start the process. So walk us through the process. Okay. So my website has free sessions for everybody in the world. And I mean that. I want to treat everybody in the world for free. The website is scalarlight.com. S-C-A-L-A-R. Scalarlight.com. You visit the website. Read the material. If you're inclined, send in your photograph. All we need is an emailed photograph of your face. And over 15 days, we will work with you round the clock. We will perform a what I call a pathogenic cleanse. We target microbes, viruses, bacteria, parasites, and we, we disassemble pathogens, microbes. We balance your chakras. And then the third modality, we create, we assemble nutrients, vitamins and antioxidants. We do all of that way, all of that in the quantum field by way of your photograph. So you don't have to do anything. You simply send us a photograph of your face and we do the rest. And I would encourage you 
include your family. You can send us five, six photographs of family members, include your pets, and then you be the judge of this new science. Again, this is a new process. Scalar energy is an emerging science. I don't know of anybody in the world that has the instruments that I have. So what I am doing is unique. It, it sure it is. Sure is. Um, I, yeah. I already submitted my photo before we start this call, FYI. <laughs> um, I'm, so I'm looking forward to this process. I'm really intrigued. Uh, different modalities of learning. I think the modality of learning that we know, the, the, the old adage is, I have to see it to believe it. In reality, you have to believe in order to see it. That's what I think yeah. opposite now. So I believe in these methods because they, they have proved true for me. Um, and uh, it's, it's reoccurring. It's constant. It doesn't change and it helps you. So I'm looking forward to hearing this. And for those out there that are listening to this podcast, you heard Tom. Go to his website. Get your 15-day free trial. Upload your pets, your family members. And get the what get the get what you have been looking for. Get the answers that you have because one thing I always tell my clients when I coach them, the answers you need are already inside you. You just have to give yourself permission to actually um, acknowledge those those answers and proceed forward. Because remember, you have to believe in order to see it. And I want to say thanks, Tom, for being on podcast Life's a Shuffle. I in definitely intrigued. This is probably one of the ones most interesting scientifically. And the approach is makes more sense now than I ever truly understood from reading any book or any novel or magazine. And um, once you spread this word through me, through glory and through yourself, we'll be able to change the universe. Yeah, let's do that. I, I predict that scalar energy is, is the technology that will liberate mankind. I mean that. Scalar energy will will free us from the encumbrance of, of uh, power shortages, of, of, of the power crisis that we face now. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of that, I say one more thing, it reminds that movie Matrix, have you ever seen the first one, how this machine has everybody hooked up to this kind of incubator and that's how they have energy. So if you think about that, how much energy does one person have? And if we all collectively work together, how much energy can we actually assimilate and expose. Yeah. That, that's why I keep this as a grassroots movement, because when a, a consolidated group of people move forward for a common objective to improve the world condition, in this case, by way of scalar energy, you will succeed. That, that's what I advocate, that people get involved in this a grass move, a grassroots movement takes foot. Yeah. So I want to ask one thing. Um, before we conclude, Tom, one last question. What is a one to five sentence you can say as someone can take away from listening to this podcast? Everybody has a mind and a heart. Okay? God has given us my, minds and hearts. And just use that to the best of your ability. Don't be too hard on yourself. Take it one day at a time. Live in the present moment. And embrace this concept of, of God's light. Everybody has scalar energy in their mind and in their heart. That's God's image. Thank you. Awesome. Oh, that's nice. So, Gloria, you have anything to add? No, I was just, um, actually, I was just writing what he just said. I like what he said. Everybody has a mind and a heart. Use that to the best of your ability. Yeah. Thank and... you so much for that, Tom. That's really wonderful. Yeah, I'm, I wrote down myself. I'm, I'm going to use it and alignment better with myself and uh for those out there you guys know where to find tom go to his website check it out and do your research that's what he's saying do your research you'll find there's a lot of information out there about this and he's right and thanks tom and thank you for our guests for listening to another episode of life's a shuffle yes tom thanks again for um joining us today and um for sharing this wonderful wonderful um information um to our listener and also to us we've definitely learned something today i have for sure um and i will be looking into this trial myself um again thanks for joining us and this is gloria life coach and meditation coach again thank you for listening to another episode of life's a shuffle <laughs>